20 minutes, and let me know if you can't hear me in the back, the microphone's for recording. Um, so this will be about 20 minutes of me talking at you, and then I guess a conversation with Andy, and then a conversation with all of you. So if you have questions, feel free to hit them up. Um, as mentioned, I'm primarily Team Colorblind, which is a team name made after the game. The game is black and white. Uh, but I'm also kind of a part of IGF and Indie Fund and Unity. Uh, and if you've submitted to IGF or Megabooth or the GDC, you've used my backend web technologies too. Um, there's Ben. We're a two-man team. I'm the programmer and business side, and Ben is the artist and like PR journalist talking to side. Making a game called Aztez. Uh, it is a black and white beat 'em up in the Aztec Empire. Uh, in the actual game, you run a you basically run the empire and sort of this board game looking thing, which will eventually be this. But right now, it's a simulation that is a bag of numbers, and we hope if we shake up this bag of numbers, a game will fall out. But in the game, there's a, there's a conflict, there's a famine happening, or a festival, or the enemy or the Spanish show up, and you go and do a combat sequence to resolve what happens in kind of the board game construct. So let me show you the game, and then we can talk about how we're making the beat em up stuff happen. So who in here is a programmer, like writes code programmer? And who's more of a designer using tools to make stuff? All right, well, I will cover some of each of those things, because Ben, the other half of the team, is not at all a programmer. So here is Aztez played for a little bit. In Unity, so hopefully it's smooth enough. A little bit of lag there. So the game is a beat em up. Here's kind of the actual game. So this is what the, the, the game would like. Without Ben, this is the game, which is not nearly as impressive. And then let me show you the game from the scene view. So the game is full 3D, but the gameplay is obviously on like sort of a 2D plane. Um, and it's full 3D primarily for workflow reasons. Uh, we're just faster in 3D. It's really, really easy to make all this stuff. We don't have to worry about backgrounds and everything. The whole game is actually one texture atlas for basically everything. Um, so let me just quick play it again, where you can kind of see the blue, or the purple frame is the camera, and you kind of see things moving around. Oops. Maximize on play. I know how to use computers, I swear. So the core of the game is a bunch of hitboxes and hurtboxes. You can kind of see the, the, like the hitbox appear and then flash when it's active. Uh, and I'll cover that stuff in a second. But yeah, I mean, that is the gist of the game. Uh, most of the meat of why it's fun is more in the tuning, the sense of impact, the effects, and everything else. And you know, like playing this version of the game is really not terrifically exciting. So let's cover how these systems are built and designed. And that was the demo. So in combat games, you typically have hitboxes and hurtboxes. Uh, hurtboxes define the shape of the character that's currently hittable in that frame. And then the hitbox is what will damage other players. So the red in these di diagrams is the hitbox, and the green is the hurtbox. Um, in Aztez, we actually do not model hurtboxes. You are always a capsule collider. And we just don't need the fidelity of a competitive fighting game when it's just you mashing buttons against an enemy. So the actual like hitbox hurtbox stuff really isn't that hard to do. Like this is the, the entry point for our stuff. It's just, you know, on trigger enter. If we're colliding against a character, then assume to damage the character, right? It's anybody could do the hitbox hurtbox overlap logic, but like why then are the moves in Aztez like these gigantic messes of things? So if you look at Aztez, uh, the move is responsible for playing a character animations, which is what Ben would animate in Motion Builder. And then translating that character, because the character is physics based, you know, if the character is dashing, it has to move, move, move forward. Spawn a bunch of effects. Synchronize those effects, so if the sword lands, do some sparks or whatever. 
um, move the hitboxes around, turn them on and off. Links are the next possible move, so if I dash and then hit attack, it'll be the kick. And if I'm not dashing and I hit attack, it's just like the first sword hit. Adding and removing states to track all those things, whether or not I am dashing, whether or not I'm airborne. Um, ben has a bunch of one-off states that I don't manage, so if you are in the game and you kick somebody on the ground, it'll actually slide them across, which is if you hit somebody who's standing and won't do that. Um, playing sounds. So the moves in the actual game are a lot more than just, did I overlap? If so, deal 10 points of damage to this character. Uh, this is from a blog post Ben has on asdes.com blog. He writes a bunch about combat stuff. So if you want to do combat design, I'd highly recommend Ben's insane posts. So this is just a graphic he did. This is not a screenshot of a tool in Unity, but it's overlaid on the animation editor. So like in the opening sword hit, the hitbox is active from here. Dash canceling is like open throughout the move, so you can always hit dash to cancel at any point in the move. If you hit left or right on the thumbstick at the end of the move, it'll cancel like the last couple of frames of the follow through. You can always block cancel, you can always absorb cancel with the blood absorb. Uh, the next move inputs are open throughout, but if you press like X again here, it won't fire until there. So we actually start listening for input before that input will fire. So if you press X early on, it just doesn't, it'll always do something. Um, and then like there's some translation in the move, I guess is moving it forward a little bit. But again, Ben writes about all this stuff on SS.com blog. So if you want to know more about combat design, check it out. So how do we all trigger all these moves? Asdes has two attack buttons only, um, X and Y. So it's like a shield attack and like the main attack. Um, so there's a list of opening attacks that are always available, um, which is basically the early first attacks that aren't part of a chain. Um, we use states to limit these. So the list of opening moves will include air hits and ground hits, or air dashes and ground dashes. Um, but the moves will say, I can only fire if I'm in the airborne state. So all those moves are always checking constantly. Um, and we have like a simple input system where all we have are button inputs with an optional held direction. And when I first did that, I was like, do you want quarter rolls? Do you want half circles and all the stuff that Street Fighter has? And Ben was like, yeah, we should probably have it at some point. And I never wrote the code for it. And by the time I was like, do you still need that? The game was basically designed around what I had done initially. Um, so we don't have quarter rolls in the game just because the tempo of the game has been built around without that. Uh, we do have a lot of kind of directional hold up an attack to do the up air attack, hold down an attack to do like a kick thing. Um, and then links can force fire a move. So like the next possible combinations of moves could just say, I will fire. And that's mostly used for production where like when you get knocked backwards, it might, might force link you into a move of fall down. So every move that's being knocked backwards can just say, now fire the fall down move and with it, rather than having all those moves have the fall down. And like, having them actually have to fall down, end up on the ground, Ben can just say, fire the move that just collapses, right? Uh, and then we just have a priority for the move. So when I press X, I'm probably triggering five or six moves. I'm, I'm definitely triggering the move that just needs X to hit. I might be triggering, if I'm holding up and I hit X, I might be triggering the up attack. Uh, if, if there's an enemy in front of me and I'm grabbing them, I might be triggering this, like, the sacrifice move. And we just fire the one that's the highest priority. That's our solution for like using two inputs is just check for everything and the one that is highest priority. So it's a source of bugs where Ben will be like, my move isn't working. It's like, oh, it's, you forgot to uh, like, raise its priority. Uh, input stuff in Unity, there's not much to it. Uh, use in control. It's a middleware free library that has 30 or 40 profiles for joysticks. Like just use in control, period. And then with the current version of Unity, except on Windows with the X input plugin for in control, we're limited to checking input before the, gra like, like the gra graphics draw in update, which sucks because if you have low frame rate and our game is happening at 100 hertz, you actually might have a little bit of lag problems there. So hitboxes. Um, we only use actual boxes. Actually, let me just get to this slide and I'll just show it to you in the editor. So we only use ever actual boxes. We don't use spheres. We don't use any other sort of complex mesh shapes. Uh, if Ben wants to, he can add more than one box, more than one hitbox. So that's kind of how he models more advanced shapes. Um, and then Ben can animate them if he wants to. In practice, he almost only ever animates the on state on and off. Um, so like if he's doing a sword swing, he'll just keep the hitbox here and then you know, put it on for five frames rather than keep it on and actually like animate it through. Uh, but he can if he wants to. Um, and then internally, all we're doing is just like literally uh, when it opens up, we just do game object add collider and a rigid body. Um, 
and make it a trigger, and that's it. Uh, this is just like a 4.x quirk, but if you are moving around a static collider that's not a kinematic rigid body, your performance will go to shit. It's fixed in 5.x, just a small little thing. Uh, and that's it for the hitbox stuff. So the way we do all the moves, oh no, I lost my slide. I lost my slide again. So yeah, let me just show you the actual move editor. So what I'm saying, like we turn the hitboxes on and off and everything else like that. All we're actually doing is, and using Unity in super, super low res is super terrible compared to 30 inch monitor setups. So let's look at like the forehand animation um, in the scene, I guess. Hold on. I close the hierarchy. All right, so with the move selected, um, we're using the Unity an animation tool for everything. So when Ben wants to turn the hitbox on and off, all he's doing is like literally, you can see the checkbox there being animated on and off. That's it. Um, and that's why the code that I have here is actually like watching for the state. You know, if I wasn't on the last frame and I'm on this frame, then I turn on. Uh, because all of those public fields are, and like it's just, we use the tool built in Unity to do all of it. Um, you will see some dark magic happening here, which is that what I have selected in the hierarchy is my move, like compound object of my moves. Like a move is a prefab which has a bunch of sub objects on it to handle different things. So like there's a hitbox, hit, hitbox object, there's an, like an effect spawner that does stuff. There's a bunch of links to other possible moves um, and then like the translate object. And when we have this object selected and we scrub the animation window, we're actually synchronizing the character animation alongside with the move. We're spawning another temporary character, the blue guy, to show what would happen if this move landed. And we're synchronizing all of the effect spawners that are in here. So like there's this step dust uh, thing. And like, this is a like sort of spawn and detach and do things. Uh, it's got a delay at the start. And if I like change this delay, you'll see like the dust there is kind of changing real small by his feet. So this one little, and what's powering this is this move editor custom window that's docked in the lower left. So when Ben scrubs back and forth of things, previously to having this tool in place, he would have to like tweak a thing and then hit play in the game and fire the move and be like, oh, the, you know, the, the sparks aren't landing when the sword is landing, right? Uh, and now we just need to scrub back and forth. And really this isn't a ton of code to do this kind of stuff in Unity. It's like you can set the position of the animations, the position of the shuriken particle systems, uh, and everything else. We have some mesh animations too. And Ben actually has a blog post where he breaks down our effects are X, Y, and Z. And then if he wants to animate like the hitbox up and down, he would just use the animation tools within Unity to do it. Like I don't have to build new tools for him to like, oh, I want to animate, you know, like the hitbox object so it actually kind of rotates or goes up and down or whatever, right? Um, that's all Ben. The downside of this is that we sometimes get extra objects, like in the hierarchy, all these sort of objects that are meant to be like hide flags dot don't save. They sometimes break, but it's an editor time tool. It doesn't really matter if the move editor gets like broken and weird and he has to reload the scene, right? Whatever. So back in the whatever I wrote down earlier. Oh, so we don't model hurt boxes. We're always a capsule. Even when you're on the ground, you're a capsule. And it, in, in our case, it doesn't matter. If you were making a fighting game, for sure you would want to model hurt boxes, but then Ben has to animate, you know, where can I be hurt for every move in the game? And there's like 500 moves in the game right now. Um, and as one person, that's not possible. Ben's animations can set physically transparent to opponents, which means if you're doing like a forward roll and you want to roll through opponents, that's why that's in place. Um, and then the actual characters can ignore hits based on certain states, um, like if they're blocking or invulnerable, or just, you know, at some part of the like stand-up animation, if you don't want the sweep to hit them anymore or whatever, that can all be done in a per-move basis. So the hit results thing, when, when I was designing this, there's like a, lot, like a lot of problems with, you basically have to decide, I fire a forward swing and it lands in the opponent, what does that opponent do? Do you tell the opponent, you've been hit by like a weak move, play like a weak stagger animation, uh, whatever that might be for you, like maybe it's different for like a four-legged character, maybe it's different for a huge boss character. Um, but then, 
or do I just tell the character to perform a very specific move? Um, so if I you know, do the dash kick character, I want them to fly backwards. Do I just say perform this move? And that's what Aztez does. But then there's a corner case problem is like, well, what if I'm fighting against that four-legged character or a big-ass boss character? Or I want his being hip hip at the dash kick to be like just a, oh, I've been staggered, not like a fly backwards uh, thing. Um, or like what about airborne hits? Like what if I, what if the character's in the air and I hit them with a sword swing and it says, you know, do a stagger backwards and take three steps and the character's in the air. Uh, so the, the Aztec solution is actually just like an override system where, where Ben can say when you would fire this move and you're in these states, fire this move instead and it's a ton of one-off work. And in actuality, the game, almost every move, uh, it's telling them to fire like a struct generic kind of like fall backwards and fire some particles and it works most of the time. Um, and in terms of tools, this is an XK, XKDC, XD something, something. <laughs> I have failed. Uh, so what this is is the chart of if you're doing a regular task and you want to gain time benefits over fi a five year period, and Aztec is on day 900 and something of funded development, so we're approaching five years or will be by the end of the project. Um, if you can shave off this much time and you do it this often, this is how long you should spend to save time. So if you're doing it you know, every day, yearly, you should spend five days optimizing it because you're gonna save a day every year and over five years you'll save time, right? Some of these results are very counterintuitive. Like if, if I can shave, shave five minutes off a thing that I do daily, you should spend six days on a tool to not do that five minutes. It's crazy, right? Um, and some of them kind of make sense, right? Like, oh, I should spend 30 minutes if I can, you know, save 30 seconds here and there. But this chart is useful when it comes to move creation, which is what I was kind of getting into. Um, yeah, so as does is 696 days of development with funding. It's almost 500 moves. We have 10,000 assets. Most of those are probably just scripts in some library file, right? But so when it comes to saving time, like that's why we have move tools like this. Um, and every now and then even I'll, I'll sit down and just watch Ben make a move um, just to make sure that he's not doing something really horribly tedious that could be easily averted by me spending that four hours. Um, and it also means it's very hard to make changes structurally to moves uh, because I can't really rename anything that's in a prefab. Like if you look at like, you know, this actual prefab here, like there's a bunch of these things that are serialized with Unity, like, you know, my add states list. Um, remove states, triggering, like, does this move, you know, will, will cancel movement, will jumping cancel out of it, will absorb canceling. And all these checkboxes could be animated by Ben without me doing anything. So if I add a new Boolean to the character movement, like, you know, allow direction change, Ben can turn that on and off throughout the move if he wants to. Um, but it means that because we have 500 prefabs, if I rename any public field, I need to make a tool to carry that change over and in actuality we just don't anymore. Um, but yeah, this is like the move system. There's, you know, do I stop the character? This is actually, there's more to that. You know, do I stop the velocity? Do I stop it just on X, just, just on Y? Like you can override some of the camera interest stuff. Um, and then we have, what this actually is in the editor is just a text file. So there's like a moves.txt file, oops, states a text file. And we're just embedding this text file in the inspector. You know, so I could just do ASDSCF and it shows up here. So really it's just like a text file and that's how we keep track of states. Um, and it means we can have typos, it means we can have all kinds of trouble, but it also means that it's really easy for Ben to go in and add one-off states. So like we have all kinds of weird states like, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm low in an airborne thing, like you could hit jump and then do a move right away. So if you had a spear, you could like plant it and do a thing. Uh, is there an opponent nearby? Am I grabbing a person? I think I actually get into states in my talk. Um, ben keeps track of all of this stuff in this manually created spreadsheet, uh, which is a little bit crazy to me, but at the same time, like, the only person making moves in the game is Ben, and he has, like, a weird naming scheme in all of his moves, and, like, his naming scheme bothers me because it's not how I would do it, and I don't touch it because it's, <laughs> it, I don't need to, right? Um, but, yeah, this is, like, all of his times and we brought on an intern, and I was like, can you help Ben populate the spreadsheet programmatically? And the intern so far has not produced results. <laughs> um, so a couple of nuances in the moves where things get weird, right? Um, we want to allow input, but delay that input send. 
So like if, you, if you're just mashing X and you press XX, we want the first move to go and then wait until the second one is at an appropriate point. Um, you can cancel with moves. We want to disallow blocking at certain times. So you can't just block out of a move or like maybe like the club swing. Normally in the game you can hit block and you'll always snap out of every possible move. Um, but you might want to say like, oh, this, you know, like this, this move is a really bad wind up and you can't block throughout it. Uh, we force directional changes, so we can say, you know, force left, force right, uh, force to the latest person that hit you, force to the nearest opponent. Um, move links can be fired from state changes, so let me show you a thing in the game that I didn't rig up. So states are, maybe they're covered in my other slide, but I call them states in the game, and they're actually not states. They're not things that have discrete entry and exit points. It's more like a list of attributes. Um, so if I try to multi-do this. So let me get my hand over the keyboard. Oh, God. Oh, my mouse cursor is hidden. So if I do a dash, and I look at the character when I get my mouse cursor back, where are you at, avatar? So the character has a bunch of states on him right now. And this, this was that list of opening possible moves that I talked about. There's 25. Um, but like a lot of like the things that switch weapons are actually moves. And like everything in the game is a move. When you're struck by a guy, it's a move. When you're getting up, it's a move. When you're dashing, it's a move. When you dash and jump, it's a different move. Um, so right now, this character has 16 states. Healthy, under control of the player. He's using the weapon sword. Um, allow air dash. Allow tellerize. I don't know what these things are because Ben added them, right? Um, but like when, when you fire the air dash, it, like the, the move will remove that state with like an animation event. Uh, and the, the air dash requires that state, so you can't air dash more than once. And that's something that Ben rigged up, and like, I, I don't know how he did it. Um, so like, I think Ben rigged up on his own, is if you dash into a wall, it, 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 there's, there's a state here touching wall. So the move links can be triggered by states being added or removed. And he added a move link, if I air dash into a wall, it goes into like this, like this is a move right there, like when he's kind of crouched against the wall. Ben added that, like I didn't do it. And then he added a link out of that. If I press jump, I do another move out of the wall, right? Um, and if I change weapons to something that has a pretty sweet down one, I can jump and then like hit an attack. And this is all stuff that Ben rigs without my involvement. Um, he actually rigged up a pretty bonkers I do have it in here. And actually, I got ahead of myself. But yeah, it's more like a list of attributes. Um, and the moves can check, like all the, all the moves can require these. All our move requirements, because it's just one thing, there's like one sort of class in there that says, you know, move requirement or like state requirement. Um, and it's any all, or all states. Most of them that are logic related are actually all states. So if I'm airborne and I'm allow air dash, then I can follow, like, like this move will actually fire. Um, and all the ones that are effects related, like effects can require the states too. Um, and those are almost always the any rather than all. Um, so like Ben made a rifle in the game. This is a secret weapon you get from the Spanish, but you get to see it. Um, and he did like a reloading mechanic just by the states thing. Like the gun has like a loaded state. And then when you press a move button when it's not loaded, it plays the reload animation, which adds the, you know, like the gun loaded state back. So he's doing all that stuff like without, like he made this rifle in a week. Like, well, the rifle's done, and I was away on some trip or whatever, um, which is really cool to see. And like, I, I don't know. And I don't know if he's even, like, like the hitbox in the rifle might be animated. It might be one long thing. I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't really care what it is as a programmer because it seems to work. And maybe that's trouble for like, oh, on Vita, we had to drop down to 50 hertz or whatever, right? And didn't, um, It's also some sweet claws I didn't put in there. But yeah, and then like just like the remaining move system stuff is just all these things that, um, how do we do grabs? Grabs are kind of one-off logic. Parries are a little bit one-off logic. Um, do we care about limiting all the infinites that are in the game? And this is like, I'm in the favor of no, we shouldn't because it's not a competitive multiplayer game. You're like, who cares if you're, you know, if you're fighting a dude and like if, if this gets, gets you off, like whatever, go for it, right? And in, in, and in the actual game, it's, it's never going to happen because somebody else will spawn. Um, but Ben actually fixed some of them just partly because they were 
I would do them constantly and it would drive him crazy. Um, like this was used to be my, my, my favorite infinite, but he changed it so that you, like the guy gets knocked backwards the second time you do it, um, which annoyed me. But it used to be like you could kind of sweep up everybody in the level by doing this. <laughs> but they're in the broken state, which is so that like glass break sound means when he stands up, he'll be dizzy. And all the effect spawners will have spawners that will fire only if the enemy's broken. So a lot of our effect spawners are actually like every move is trying to fire basically every possible effect. And then they're just gated by the states not being there. So like the struck hit might have a bunch of effects that are like, if I'm in the air, then do these particles. Uh, and they just don't fire when you're on the ground. Uh, and that, that allows us to have a lot of reuse in our effect systems um, just because Ben can do. And that's the just frame parry in the game, which is really hard to do. It's like an actual couple frame window. Didn't do it. But yeah, um, the other couple of nuances that it, having forced links, so like there's a, you can knock a guy into the air and then jump after him. Ugh. So this, that, that was like hitting him and then jumping, but there's actually a link uh, in that move that if that move landed, which is just a state, like move has landed, um, and you press jump, you'll actually jump up, like kind of like the jump up is a move. So I do this. Like, see how he jumped up right to match his animation? That's an actually like a, like a one-off move for if you press jump right after you knock a guy into the air, it's doing a custom move to get you there at the right time for like a cadence kind of rhythm reason. Um, and that's all state stuff that Ben can add. So if he wants to, Ben can go crazy and just start adding states to like, he, he, when he has extra time, he'll go in and do different like fallback animations. Um, like the kick has changed a little bit. And the other thing I haven't talked about, because I'm actually at the end of my slides, uh, is we do have time control in the game. We can either do like the global time scale, which is very obvious, or we can actually scale time per character, which will scale time on all the characters, sort of spawn animations, all their effect systems, and everything else. Um, so you'll, you'll see when there's like a lot of hit stops in the game. Like if I like, kick a guy, there's a tiny hit stop. And if I do uh, like a sacrifice, there's a little bit longer time scale. And like we're, we're scaling the time on the sound effects that are playing. Sound effects can opt out of that because some sound really weird. It's like there's a little bit of a slowdown there. But I mean, in a nutshell, that's how our hitbox move system works. If you want to know more, I'm doing like a whole three hour workshop tomorrow about how we did all this stuff, all the tools. And I think it's limited to 17 people so we can actually just open up laptops and people can be like, yeah, I'm doing a similar thing. Like how do you do X, Y, and Z? But I think. That's all the stuff I had pre-prepared. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, so I mean, this is, I, I think, hopefully pretty obvious stuff. But um, a lot of the things I do in Aztec, I, I think, uh, you know, I'll just replace this later. You know, we need to do like a, like a wake up move. Ah, oh, crap. I'll just do like a really dirty if statement, thinking I'll do like an engineered system later. And then oftentimes, we don't need more wake up moves. But that's what ships, right? Um, but conversely to that, it is really hard to rename data or fields entirely if you have hundreds of prefabs. You have to make tools to do that. Uh, and then I do wish we had a way to replay, like a scrub the last 10 seconds of the game to see what was happening. Because oftentimes a move won't fire. And it's because some state is not there when it should be. Or there's a typo in a state or something. Uh, and if we had the ability, because like moves are doing logic, they're like, oh, I didn't fire because this state was not not like a, a match. And it's really an easy way to see when exactly that happens. So we lose a, like, a lot of time um, just trying to debug moves that aren't working correctly. And if we had tools there, it'd be a lot easier. But if you have any questions about anything in general with Aztez or with your own combat games or with Unity, like, feel free to at any time send me an email. And I say that because no one ever follows up on it. Yeah. Like, seriously. And those are Twitter usernames if you want to hear about Gamergate. <laughs> Okay, hey everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Andy Nealon. I'm a professor here at the Game Innovation Lab in the Game Center. I teach uh, game design and programming and computer graphics. I'm a longtime friend, I think, at this point of Matthew, so I'll see. I have prepared a few questions. Um, I'm going to start with a little bit of a Q&A, but try to move it to the audience as fast as possible so you guys can get your questions in, because I'm assuming that not everyone here is coming to the workshop tomorrow. Um, I have a bunch of general stuff. Yeah. But 
the thing that just got me the most technology wise was your state system. Yeah. Right? So I'd never seen, you, you guys never showed me this. So this is not like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. Interesting. Because I've also never programmed a brawler or a fighter or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like the thing is, like, I, neither have I. And it's not like Japan talks about how they make Street Fighter, right? right? So it's just like, I don't know, I guess we need to do it this way. Like, I'm really curious if someone else. Well, the question I game. have is basically, is this some, like, carried over intelligence from does is this stuff that Ben talks to a bunch of designers about and then they say oh wait you don't actually do explicit states right you do these states which are yeah like you have essentially my comparison or my analogy would be like Google Mail versus any Firefox or something yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. not you don't have buckets you throw a thing into you're putting a ton of labels there yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're like basically putting a post-it note yeah this is what happens and then Ben has to go through what I think is potentially the painful aspect of doing all the logic. Okay, yeah. If you have like normal state machines, then you have some transition logic into the next yeah. state. But now suddenly, because the states aren't like bubbles of a little graph, yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, let's, bu let's, bap, let's put this thing on. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. suddenly like, the, the complexity of all the possible yeah, transitions yeah. suddenly it's, it's grows. It's all on his right? head, which is really insane. So like, part of the problem with states is also like the move links. Like, right. he can do one-way links where you can't get back to a move or whatever, right? Like, we're trying to graph out, from this move, these six moves are possible with these states or whatever, right? But so far, he hasn't needed it. How big is that? Does he, when you say graph out, it's like... I, I, we've, we never built a tool to do it. Right, so There's he's... 485 moves in the game. A lot of them are, like, the struck. I've been hit by a thing in the air, on the ground, by the club, by the, by the dashing kick. Um, but it's all in his head. And I'm so, none of, so does he have it in these in these slides, or did, in, did you show that he has like no? He just has like these timing, these timing it, spreadsheets. I think it's just all in his head. He's got them all named as like um, sword, ground, a one, a two, a three. So that's the three hits if you just hit x, 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 and like that kind of makes sense. But I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but so, I mean, it sounds super flexible because it allows him to like later on say, oh wait, I'm going to do this other move, so I yeah. can add this label to a state well, for state the, again that already exists, but it's not really. Well, for the longest time, I actually did not allow him to set persistent states. So any state he would set in a move would be removed at the end of that move. And they were for managing like, um, certain things in, like, in, inside of a move that he needed at some point to, to like, add the like, allow air dash state or something like that. Um, so for a while, he could only remove states but not add new states. Only my code could add new states persistently. And then I finally allowed him to add persistent states from a move. And that's like, yeah, that's a quagmire, right? Like, it's up to him not to fuck it up. <laughs> Just goes to show, I mean, I don't know, it's like a, I'm, can't, I'm trying to wrap my head around this in terms of like... It's not extensible to more than one team exactly. member, for sure. Well, that's the it's point, It's absolutely right? not possible right? for Ben to collaborate point. with like anybody at this point. Like, there's, ne there's never been any, the assets will only ever ship with moves Ben has made. Like, I don't even know how to make a move anymore. I've never opened up any of his animation files in Motion Builder. I don't know the full process to like, put it, like, if you were to tell me like, hey, can you add like a, you hit X at the end of the air dash and it does like a thing. I'm like, well, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> And so how often does he come back and like ask you for like, hey, by the way, you need to like the system doesn't work yet. Here's yeah. the thing I need. Like, can you do this change? We have this. It hasn't been a while. It's been mature. So access has been like three years in full time dev, um, and it's been a, the last thing I added was like wake up moves. He wanted enemies to be able to like rather than stand up, uh, like stand up with a, a hit or something, right? And that was kind of like in the AI logic, um, but not in a while. And like it was always uh, I'm trying to think of an example of like what he wanted. A lot of it was just persistent states. But yeah, it's, it's been a while since he has requests. And the move system's not that big. It's maybe four or 500 lines. No, it definitely sounds like you've offloaded all the work of a programmer <laughs> no, to I your artist. You. So I, I, right? I made that debug view like the other night just to show it off of the, the workshop thing. And that, that really is what the game looks like without Ben. And it's terrifying. It's absolutely <laughs> terrifying. And even like the curves, are, when you're like, kicking someone, they're all animated translations. It's all Ben. Like, I, 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 very, I very definitely am making tools that Ben consumes. Right. Like, that's our relationship. I, at the start of the project, like, I made a bunch of, like, Raptor Safari and Minotaur China Shop physics games before. And at the start of Aztez, when I got involved, I wanted to make it more physics-y. Like, we had ragdolls at one point. Um, I had a bunch of, like, you'd stop moving, you'd slide to a stop. And I exposed all those as parameters to Ben. Like, how long does it take to slide to a stop? And all my exposed parameters became zero or, like, nine, 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 nine. He, like, I'm like, here's a, you, you can do this now. He's like, zero. I'm like, no, you, you can tune it if you want to. And he's like, no, zero. Like, the game is very much animated, frame perfect. Like, all the translations tend to happen in the first frame, like, frame of a move. It's very, like, rigid and, like, tempo driven. And that's Ben. And at some point, I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, it's not my vision for the game. Like, I'm a technical enabler. Like, 
Ben wants to drink a bunch, and I'm like, I'll go to the corner store every hour on the hour as long as you want. <laughs> and that's the result. Again, with the wrapping my head around it, like I'm trying to figure out what this means in terms of this is not a, like it's oh, you just said it's not really a reproducible process, so, right? It's not. This of. is not like there's. We actually this have. is like a one-off. You, you use the term one-off a lot, and this is also feel like globally a one-off. Like how how can you possibly make this like usable for anything other than your unique relationship? Oh, we totally can. Yeah, there's only two of us. We don't need to. Um, so I mean, th there is a little bit of detail. So like. Because they're all just all in unity, like it is possible to run through all of the moves, and this is really slow when debug is on. So it is possible to like do some sanity checking, right? Let me go right. find the and this is a really, really slow. I don't know how to so like you can see some when I was just typing. Right. So like here's it so like all, all of our states and things, um so like Attack, rifle, grab, tech five, forward shot. I don't know what that is or what it does, but it's priority 50. It has one hit result, which is struck mini blast back, which is like a generic, I'm being blasted backwards by a kick or by anything else. And all of our like, states and things are animation events on the timeline in Unity, right. where it's fire this function with this string parameter, which is also problematic, right? Because there's no way for us to fix that without dark reflection. Um, but these play sounds are blue because this editor script is actually looking up that sound name in our sound manager, and that sound is actually in there. Okay. Um, these are the remove states and add state persistence that he's firing. Um, so if there ever are problems in like the very last minute of the project, like we just sprint to do a thing and like, holy fuck, we've broken. Like, like we edit a boss character, and now we totally broke it, right? Like you're, you're fighting Cortez, and we don't know what's happening. The data is in there. Like I could write, you know, I could make a master list of states and I could go in and parse all of our animation events. Like this window is so slow because it's literally parsing all 500 moves every time it draws. And it's not, it's not like 10 seconds slow, right? It's like right. Uh, it renders five times a second. Um, so if we needed to, you know, like the one above, I don't know what move that is, but it's like it's adding a state can land, which I don't know what that does either. Um, <laughs> oh, it's pretty descriptive, right? Like at least he's using English. Yeah. So my, my guess is can land is like if you if you hit if you become grounded and can land is set, it probably plays a move where you're like, oh, I'm landing. Right. I, I guess I don't actually know. And like yeah. So if, if Ben is hit by a bus, Aztez is <laughs> like we're 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 like we're shipping with. We have there's a slide in the other talk or screenshot in the other talk. We have 20, 30 characters in there right now. So that's what we ship with if Ben's hit by a bus. <laughs> it's not gonna. It's not gonna be hit by a bus. You guys live in Phoenix. Yeah, he doesn't leave the house. Not as dense as here. I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, but it's yeah, no, it definitely like, I mean, not extensible. I mean, it's, fa it's just a, it's just a fascinating way to devise a system because it feels it feels a lot more old school to me. Like it feels a lot more like the pre people like actually using finite automata state machines and stuff like that. Yeah. Where we just mean, like where you have a huge case switch sta statement that had like at, like insane boolean mm -hmm. expressions, right? This sounds like that again, and it's only possible because Ben can hold that in his head at any given time because that's his life. Like, yeah. that's what he breathes. It, 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 is, it is absolutely his life. I, I'm stuck with this maximized. <sighs> <laughs> oh, there it is. It was in the right-click menu. Um, see, I wanted to show you. So, I mean, if this were Flashbang, which is a company that I ran that was, like, six people, I would have, like, Matt Meckley or someone make editor tooling for two weeks to fix it. So like all the things that are like add states are always in this like, it's just a, literally like a list of strings. Right. Uh, but what you could do in Unity is like, you could, you could find that, like they're, they're actually strings, right? Right. So we, 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 we could actually just like, you can do custom property drawers and stuff. So you could do like something like that. Um, and then it would render that with a custom UI, and that custom UI would like verify that the states were correct. And if it was new, it would ask him like a like, little pop up, like, this is a new state. Do you want to add it to the master list? Like, it would be possible to fix that with tooling. We just have never needed to. Right. Oh, and by the way, for the Unity people, this inspector node is what's doing the, these like, headers and stuff. Right. So I'm literally, like, they've, they've changed it since we put this in there. We, we started adding in 3.5, but like, they added features we can use. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, the state requirement is this right. down here, which is rendering out, you know, this whole chunk. We could put more two in it, too. Right. You can have custom classes have custom UI wherever they're used in the inspector. So, like, state requirement could just have a totally custom block of UI that 
is smarter so than me. I think that actually, so wait, when you say Matt, Mac, so Matt is a former employee yeah. with Flashbang. So were you, you, you were using Unity way back in the day? Yeah. So this was like, so, so how many years have you been using Unity? Oh, we've been using it since version 1.6. And that was around when? I don't even know. 2008, okay. 9. We've been using it a very, very long time. Before it was, it was Mac only back in those days. <laughs> then it became out of Mac and the whole community was like, you've ruined it by putting it to Windows and then Indie became free and they you ruined it by putting it out for free. I guess my question is going to go in the direction of like normally I always like I, I warn people about using engines because of default values and stuff like that and it sounds like you guys have like bent this thing in all different shapes and sizes over the course of six years six ish years yeah and now it just becomes whatever you want it to be like what are your what like I guess my what I'm interested in is like does the fact that it's lacking a replay system is that a limitation of your, is that a time limitation or is that a limitation is that a constraint within the within Unity that you just didn't figure out how to do that in a good it's way? It's mostly or? an engineering problem on my end. Like, it would take me a week to make that work correctly. Okay. And then it's just like, well, I mean, there's only like me as the programmer. The scary part about being the one programmer versus Flashbang when there were three or four of us programming is like when I go on a trip and come back, I come back and the code is where I left it, which is really, it's a, it's a big mental problem, like with motivation. It's like, oh yeah, where was I? Oh, God damn it. Like, I looked up some of our tasks and they've been open for like two months. I'm like, oh, I should have done that two months ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we could do it. It's not built in. Like, there's some things built in in Unity, like the automatic, I can make anything public, any public field can be animated, like full stop. Like, that's super, super useful. Um, but at the same time, it means that, yeah, you, you kind of have to deal with their serialization stuff if you want to, like, save your game or, like, save the replay system in a way that's just not cumbersome. Right. So how long did it take you to figure out that, that interface between the two of you? Like, did you, was that like a moving target for a while and then it converged and you locked it in? Because yeah, now it feels very a, locked in, right? Yeah, now it feels we have, like you're we have like, a really weird relationship. Um, ben hates using my time. Um, so he'll struggle with like a move not working for like three hours. And he's in the room with me, like right where you are. Like I'm on my desk, he's in his desk. And I can kind of tell he's like off. Yeah, maybe he didn't sleep well. Maybe he's hungover. And then at some point he's just like, oh, can, can you come look at this? Like this move's not firing. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm like, yeah, it's the, oh yeah, I think you're just missing. And then he's like, oh, I think, oh God damn. Like that's our dynamic. He's so afraid of tapping me. And I try to, like years ago, I, I would try to impart upon him like, uh, like sort of self-reliance and like, you know, please don't tap my programmer time. It's like, well, do you want me to fix this? Do you want me to make this new thing? And he maybe took it too much to heart. Uh, but we don't communicate a bunch, which is weird. We don't ever talk online. So we like, both live in the same area. We both have an office. It's like a 10 foot by 20 foot office. Uh, but we'll work entire days just in our headphones. Like, I'm doing this stuff with the Empire, that bag of numbers that you saw, and then he's making moves, and then it's just like, Whole Foods? Like, is, okay. is that how you sneak behind him to watch what he's doing? Sort of, because I thought it was interesting when you described how you like, look at what he's doing and yeah. how he's scrubbing through a thing, and to actually see if he's like that XKCD comic, like, yeah. where you'd be like, mm, I'm going to do this thing for him for like a day or two, and it's going to save. Uh, but I, I, I can see one of his two screens from my desk. I can just look over and be like, OK. Yeah, because he'd hate it, right? If he knew that you were actually yeah, I mean, doing I've, your job. I've told him before, like, <laughs> I'm going to do a pass on the move system. And that, that's when I did the sync with the animation particles. And that was like a day of work. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, can I watch you make a move? And then it's kind of weird, right? Because he's like, I'm watching him. It's, he's not in his natural environment of like making a move and typing over here and then like watching the YouTube video, right? It's like, oh, I'm making a move. Like, wow, that seems so efficient and, and natural. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not. It sounds more like pair programming in that case. Because again, yeah. what he's doing with all the logic stuff, like I, it's not, I get it that he's not doing the script in the background, but you're like, you're offloading so much of the stuff that you'd normally do in code to the UI that he then navigates and keeps in his yeah. head, which is why there, he can't get hit by a bus. But, yeah, there are only so many right. states in the game that are set by code, like right. um, if you're airborne or not, and like if you're touching a wall and you're an opponent, but there's like a lot of states now that are only set by him. I don't really know, like Tellarize? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I can find out, but I don't really need to. I would love to ask you some stuff about like the surprises that come with the fact that you have no rigid state machine. But yeah. like for like for example, like a couple of months ago, you guys showed me that video of some person, some babe, some tester. I forget what. Oh, name. this. Sorry, Remember that? Guy? Yeah. Do you, yeah. You have that? Uh, it was just like some absurd. Internet, internet's not working. Like you guys were watching. Of course, I had no idea what was going on, right? So these guys are watching someone play their game and are like, "Oh, I didn't know that was possible." And I was like, "How do you?" What? Well, How do you no. not know? Oh, yeah, it is. There it is. Pac-Man oh. fever. Pac-Man fever. 
claims yeah, the lives work. of tens of thousands of people every month. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it was just like, it was once, once again fascinating to me. And of course, there's anecdotal evidence for this because a lot of the combos in Street Fighter were programmer mistakes. Right? I'm normally and bugs a, and a Chrome stuff. man myself, but uh, I'm a little reluctant to open up my personal Chrome with a projector. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't quite know it's going to be in there. Auto, you think autocomplete could uh, be compromising? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Ben was sending a lot of oh, Aztec up coming Wii U Indie Brawler. Wait, um, it was a YouTube video, right, or something? Yeah, it's probably a YouTube embed on here. Um, so Ben was sending a bunch of builds to like, so this Sorry and Dash guy like wrote the Bayonetta 2 guide or the Bayonetta 1 guide um, and just, uh, don't, have, don't have ad strips, so thank God. Um, yeah, he just does combos. So a lot of what's happening in these combos is the ability to hit block and cancel out of a move early. So you can do an up attack and get out of the way. And he's talking over this. Give you some basic information regarding the game's combat mechanics and hopefully demonstrate the potential of this system. The combat of Aztec takes place on a 2D plane. I love this. player character which has Jeez. different attack states. Standing, jumping, dashing. Well, we don't think about the game in dash, this way. Jumping. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you pause it and it'll come back or something. Yeah, I'll just skip ahead jump to the somewhere. And we'll... One for each attack button. Each of the four weapons has its own pair of counter attacks. Dare I? So he's able to counter anything at will. The story system is simple but very is. demanding. You have to try and build up as high a combo count as possible. This is all debug UI, UI, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Your combo so, like, set. hitting them down. Oh, so every time he has to do a link or there's like a very short frame for comp for parries, he just hits it every time? He's just Yeah, I mean, parry is like, it's time-based, but I think it's like 1 40th of a second. It's really, really low. And if you hit block, and we changed it so um, it, it's, you basically have to do like a late block. So if you miss it, you're likely to be hit. Like, th th there's two ways to fail a parry. One is you block too soon, and then it's just a block. Right. And one is you... Block too late and then you're hit, you which hit. is really, really bad. If you whiff an attack or take damage, your combo streak will return. Well, he's just able to stay in the air as long as he wants. Sacrifice by grabbing an enemy that's on the verge of death and pressing attack by So, obviously, so you're, from what you talked about, your, your gut feeling for that is like, yeah, let them do it. Is Ben okay with that? Yeah. Or does he, like, shorten the, 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 link, the link duration to, like, make it like, oh, no, no, this guy has to get better at that? Yeah, I mean... For most things, we're okay with it. Part of it is we haven't finished the rest of the game loop, which is like, this mission is happening. You have five minutes to kill 100 guys, 20 guys. You have three minutes to kill this one guy. You have four minutes to stay alive against infinite spawns. You have to kill these, whatever. Those are the actual like game missions, and we haven't finished that loop up, so we don't know if we need to tune that stuff. Right. Um, so the, the actual context for the game isn't quite complete, which is really frustrating for all of us. Well, me and Ben, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, like this, this guy does stuff that we can't do. Which is really, really interesting. I mean, what kind of mean like, like reflex-wise? He changes weapons a lot, which is the time slowdown. So he's like, he like changed to the sword to do the down or the. There's like this teleporting ceremonial dagger. And he switches in the air, right? He's doing the switch. The weapon switches in the air. Yeah, like that was a right. weapon switch. Um, that was a parry. That was dashing out of the way of the, the unblockable priest attack. Like, it makes no sense. <laughs> But this is what Ben really wanted when he, when he made Aztec. So he wanted people to be able to do stuff that he couldn't conceive of and then people to make combo videos. Like that's kind of Ben's win state for the game. Is like even if we don't sell all that well, uh, if people like Sari and Dash post these combo videos and he's like, check this out, do a 500 bajillion combo. Like that's what Ben's all excited about. Like, that's what he, that's his jam. So how do you guys get, wait, but isn't he also like, between the two of you, he's also the guy who plays the board games, right? No, not really. Not really? We don't really play board games either. How did you guys come up with the board game idea? Well, how did that, it, how it, that it's, materialize? It's board game. Like, the best well, way to like conceive the, it is... It's a simulation. It's yeah, a, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I saw hexes. Yeah, now, right? it's, now it's more of a sim. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always been Ben's vision that you just run the empire and then it's resolved with combat. Uh, but we never really had a cohesive vision for that. So how much of that was? Uh, how much of that decision came th from the from just not having the bandwidth to make like a single player experience in the traditional? sense of the word. It's more right. inspired by like weird worlds to infinite space type games where what we, what we, what we oh, it's super good weird worlds. Look it up. The artist died recently. Oh wow. He died like four months ago. How old is that game? It's a, it's oh, a, it's it's a, a it's, it's, it's on an iPad now too. Yeah. Um, 
But like the contract of that game is like, this is, you play this game, it's going to be over in 40 or 50 minutes. So like the, the goal of Aztecs is to be able to play an Empire game in 45 to like 90 minutes. And you play 10 short combat sequences. They have meaning. You care about them. Like, we just want to dole out combat. So, like, the, the high-level Aztez was a beat-em-up that's not a god of war. Here's our 45-minute intro cutscene. Beat up some guys, go to a new room. Oh, sweet, it's a, it's a cutscene. Like, cool. And then you put the game down, you come back to it, and you're like, I'm 15 hours in. What the fuck plot is happening? Who's this guy? I just want to beat up dudes. Uh, so the, the construct is, like, not much in the metagame, except, like, hey, care about the results. Like, you might want that city to, to win this event so you can stock up gold for the Spanish showing up later so you can actually beat Cortez. Like, beating Aztez is beating Cortez back in, like, alternate history kind of a deal. But, like, it's meant to be this short, replayable experience just to dole out these five-minute So there's some FTL games. or weird yeah, worlds yeah, in yeah, it. Totally. Just, like, a, a simple random drop kind of board game thing. So, like, it... In our ideal game, it's like, yes, this is the Aztecs game where I finally push back the Spanish. I've, like, I've strengthened my capital city. I've quelled that rebellion really well. I've got food supplies. And then you do a hard mission that tells you it's going to be hard. And you're like, oh, I'm going to get this sweet item. That's gonna... And then you fuck it up. And then it just goes downhill. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll play again because Cortez beat me again. Like, that's our ideal Spelunky-esque failure right. um, for the game. But really, it's because it's like the combat demo is fun to play for five minutes. And... Playing Aztecs is just going to be playing 10 variants of that with some kind of context. Because right? Right. if you don't care about winning or losing, like it, it really changed the game when we added, if you whiffed on a move, it broke your combo state and told you that, like, oh, your combo is not 80 anymore, it's zero. We started playing very, very differently when we were even just testing, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to be careful with my button mashing now because I'm not just going to do this. And have you figured out how you're going to link all of that data that comes from like a play of this game with the simulation on the... Some of it. We, some we, of it. we have some tests. A lot of it's the blood collection mechanic is actually to give the blood to the god of your choosing to get things and stuff. And then it's hand waving. It's like, and then fun comes out. We see. It happens. <laughs> there's two Board of us. game design is hard. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's two of us. Yeah, I've been doing the hex sim thing for a while now. Um, yeah, but there's like two of us. We're in Arizona. It's, Phoenix is dirt cheap compared to New York. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, like we've run the company for three or four years off of like a seventy-five thousand dollars, which is, it sounds like a lot of money until you start running numbers, and then it's not. It's not. A lot. Um, I don't think anyone here will think so. Or anyone who's like doing active development. Yeah, like that we're, that's a lot of money. we're going to ship the game at some point. That'll be good, and it might take another year. It might take six months, but like us or our kids will ship as Tez. That's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be great. I think that's a pretty good spot for me to, to hand it off. Um, let's start taking questions from the audience starting right here. Um, so it, the, the very elaborate state system, uh, I wonder how you um, integrate AI into it. Our AI is pretty stupid. Um, you can kind of see what they're doing in the scene view. Um, so enemies, like the, the, there are kind of values that you would consider to be AI. They have like a confidence value and a bravery value and these other values that really don't do a whole lot. They've never emerged in the way that I thought would be useful. Um, so all the AI really does is stack up against you. So if you spot a bunch of guys, they don't overlap. They kind of have a target position. And then they, they, they have different modes that they can change in and out of. So like this, like a later character that will go into like a blocking mode for 20 seconds. And then that he'll fire different moves in that mode. But every AI is just on a dice roll, trying to fire a move between X and Y seconds. And then it asks like, the manager, can I fire this move? And the manager will gate the number of total moves happening at once to a certain amount. So like, all 10 of these guys will not fire like, 10 attacks at once. Those, and there's no more than two or three at a time. Um, and that's actually just the timer for no input. Yes, I mean, the AI is not so good and smart, but it seems to work. Like it, it might be a problem later if we have like a protect this one character mission. You might be like, oh, we should maybe code that kind of stuff. And for our boss missions, we're going to end up doing a bunch of one-off AI. So when you fight Cortez or these underworld bosses and are there secret characters that are all in Ben's mind, um, <laughs> yeah, that'll probably have a lot more like logic stuff. I might just write like a one-off script to handle Cortez or whatever, right? Right here. Uh, yeah. So at what point did you figure this would be, I guess, this final Yeah. Um, as things were added to, like, as you were being, a lot of you were using more things like the type of property drawers and stuff, I, I guess 
when you started, did you have a very clear idea of what you would ultimately like to make, or how did the evolution? They've always been like ad hoc tools as necessary. Um, so like this move editor window here has always been around, um, and it'll show you like all of the different links and things that are in the move. And the only way to make a move is with this editor tool. So you have to like use this to like, there's a big create move button somewhere that I think is probably scrolled down because this is like super low res right now. Um, but yeah, you, you have to make moves with this tool and like that'll make a couple of things for you and like add components. Um, but it's always been there, it's just gotten more flexibility over the time. So like I can directly select any of these links and like it's, it's telling me what it's linking to. So it's just like a lot of little helper tools, but like, you know, the move editor is not a crazy amount of code, I don't think. You know, it's 700 lines. But it's nothing super, super bonkers crazy. And like a lot of that is just the overhead of using the on GUI stuff in Unity, which is a little, a little bit painful. Um, but yeah, I can show you maybe. I don't know where the sync stuff. Like I haven't looked at this in quite a while. Uh, I was going to show you where the particle sync is, but I don't even know. The answer, the answer is I don't know how this project works. I may, I may have actually, someone may have died and they may have came in and took it over. Um, but yeah, I mean, like this is the move creation. Like there's a there's a clip that's used to sync up stuff, but like the the. APIs for the editor temp stuff are really quite powerful with, with Unity. They're not well documented, but you can like create prefabs and like do stuff to them and dirty prefabs and like at one point the, the project was actually in JavaScript originally because all the worst stuff was JavaScript and we moved it over from JavaScript to C sharp with tools. Like you can do that if you're insane, uh, but it's not so good. I'm trying to figure out where our uh, I don't know. All editor time tools, yeah, you just <laughs> throw stuff at it. The, the game code is much more structured than the, right. like, all the editor stuff. Editor stuff is whatever. Yeah, you don't you do it once and you don't touch it again. Even, yeah, even if it's slow, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't need to work on other platforms, right. so who cares? Uh, that. I guess you seem like somebody who's quite committed to using the inbuilt Unity uh, tools. Yeah. Right Keyframe animation system within Unity to make, to make to author the animations or at least tweak them? Um, to author everything but the character animation data. Right. So, like, a move is a character animation clip from Motion Builder and then oh, it's from Motion Builder. Okay. our hierarchy of stuff. So, everything like hitboxes and links are all in the move. So, like, you know, this is a move. And all that, and it, like anything where Ben is turning on and off, like whether or not movement will cancel a thing, and like all that kind of stuff is all, and like yeah, it's all the stuff within Unity. And it seems like you're using the physics engine as well. Yeah, characters are capsules. They're all like just rigid body capsules, but um, almost all the movement you see in the game is animated. So like all the all the arcs when you like knock a guy into the air. So if I there is there is like rigid body controlling every line. Very rarely. Um, this this is like a rigid body, but it's it's really dampened. Um, so like you know even like this kind of those, that's all animated data. So like even. So the question that I wanted to ask was, I mean you've been working on this for a long time. If, if you started again now, would you use MechAnim instead of your own state machine? Would you use Boss Two D to do some? Yeah. Stuff? Uh, yeah, we would probably use MechAnim for the sole reason that it's being optimized. Like the legacy stuff is not. And I, I talk to them a lot about that. And they're like, because you know, on, on certain platforms, it'll be like animation.rebuild internal state, eight, 18 milliseconds. I'm like, well, we can't do that in production. And they're like, oh, you're on legacy? Like, you're fucked. Where like Mechanim is getting, we, we could still change the game over to Mechanim if you wanted to, but it would suck. Like, so all we're ever doing with, like, with the characters is, is play the animation clip. We don't use IK systems or blending or anything else. It's just play this clip and be, be done with it. But we're stuck in a code base, a part of the code base that won't be optimized for Vita or for Oculus or for any other platform. So it's a, it's a dangerous place to be, but worst case, we have one of our crazy friends write a tool that puts our stuff over the mechanism and we do it in a weekend. Can you briefly describe to people who don't, don't know what Mechanim is? Mechanim I'm not is sure just, if everyone, everyone knows what Mechanim, Mechanim is. just the name of the new animation system within Unity 4. something, 4. 
maybe it showed up in the 4.x series. Um, the guys that did Motion Builder out of Montreal, and they started up a new company with a bunch of IP a couple years ago, and they got bought by Unity. Um, that's the actual like where they're just hardcore. And like, but now it's a broader system where it can be used to animate things, and it has a state machine, and you can like set up states that are actual states, not my attributes. Um, and like exit them properly, and then like they can have transitions, and now you can use it to animate other parts of it. And in the future, Mechanema will be the core node-based system that'll be sort of the visual scripting systems and stuff. Um, but because it's a very active part of the feature set, it's been optimized heavily. 5.x has like a job system where everything is now multi-threaded magically through block list something, something, something. I don't understand it. Uh, but like that's on Mechanim and not on Legacy. Right. Like we're using the animation stuff that's been in like the 1.x days of Unity, which is really, really not a good place to be. But So I guess that, that sort of leads into my question that you've been using Unity now for how long did you say? Like five years? Five, now? six years. Yeah, since yeah. Like, like the 1.x days. And you're pretty clearly like a Unity expert, except for they keep introducing new stuff that yeah. You're not really working with or touching. So like, even as somebody who's an expert in the community, how much of it do you feel like you know? Like, How much of it do you feel like is not really something that you understand? Yeah. Like, it's, there's, there's so much stuff. So would you feel like almost like you'd understand Unity better now if you just started working with it now versus all the time you spent working on it already? Yeah, I, I have a weird view. Like, I used it long enough to forget what was confusing when I first bumped into it. Like, The fact that things are game objects with a bunch of components on them makes sense to me now. Sure. And originally, it's just like, wait, why is this thing not rendering like what's happening um there's that 1.x days was so old with the net compiler that there weren't like generics there weren't other things which is why we didn't use c sharp originally um so my coding style is like not even modern with net stuff like generics and like what are these things and properties like i don't use any of that um it's a very archaic style it's, like, it's, what, it's what works um and yeah there are entire feature sets especially with 5.x where like uh, like Enlighten or like all the baking occlusion stuff and like the AI node pathing systems and things. I haven't touched any of them, so I have no idea. Like if you were to come to me and be like, hey, we're thinking about Unreal or you, like, and we're, th these are our feature sets and our problems. I was like, I don't know. I've never done that AI pathing systems. I don't know if they're garbage or not. They've had a couple of stinkers in the past where they, they do like the terrain system and then they just leave it alone forever. And they do like the tree system, which no one even remembers. Like there's a tree generator, and they just oh, whatever, garbage. So I put that into there. And they're totally aware of like the input system is garbage. Yeah. It, it's going to be fixed in five point something, but not five point oh. So I don't know. Yeah. They're a big company with yeah. a lot of engineers. Are you? Um, how did you go? I first saw the demo here. I just went to Kotaku, and um, and then I saw you guys at PAX year. How? What's the story of your um, media and social media? Thing? Yeah, I'm going to cover that more in depth tomorrow, but um, I feel like we do kind of a, so I, I feel like we like, do a bad job of it. And I tell my friends that, and they're like, oh, no, no, I see you everywhere. And like, well, do you see me everywhere because we're friends and like we're following the same Twitter accounts? Um, we just try to talk about it a lot, but I feel like we're constantly like, oh, shit, we haven't posted to the blog in two weeks. We haven't even posted to Facebook in two weeks. Like, we have a stat board on our, all right, I'm going for it. All right, Chrome. Don't, don't you do it. So we had like a stat board that we just keep on a TV in our office wall, you know, and it's got things like, oh, look, it's our Facebook impressions. I, we did a single post in the last <laughs> month. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like we do a really bad job of that. Like any indie success story that really got out there, like Overgrowth, uh, before Humble Bundle, that was four guys, one of them whose job was to talk. He did blog posts every day. Like they did a blog post a day for a year. Um, like the Wolfire guys did that. And I, I feel like we constantly just get submerged by trying to do a thing with the game and then we're like, oh shit, we need to talk to people. Um, so I don't know, I feel like we do a bad job, but we have been to a couple PAXs. We, did, we didn't go to this last PAX Prime. They seem to do okay. It's really great to go to a PAX and then someone comes up and like, oh, I saw this last PAX. But it's also a really distinct looking black and white game. Like you're gonna see the game at a distance, like oh shit, Aztec is here or Aztec is here or whatever, you get it wrong, right? But I don't know. I hope, but I, like, no, it's not quite visible here, but, like, these numbers aren't, aren't really that big. Like, 928 Twitter followers, that's not, that's not a megaphone at all. Um, oh, yeah, and then don't show yourself your old email. Oh, and then this is, these are green because their backups are less than 24 hours old. 
And if they don't go green, I fix it. Just a word to the wise. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, 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 I'm scared by all these low numbers because they're not crazy big, but we're also not anywhere near shipping. Like the plan is to get the game done and then actually plan out like, all right, three month launch window. Like, let's put up big post-it notes. Like, all right, the first big video reveal and like our first big let's play. Um, and then our false flag campaign to get Gamer Gate's attention. Or you know what, whatever, <laughs> whatever you need. Good times. So I, I don't know if that answers your question at all. No, it's good to know I feel like we are. Good one. Yeah, right, right here. So um, when, you were, when you started to build the system, um, I guess, did you guys just sort of build it from scratch without, like, what were your references? And then, um, like, throughout building, like, did you steal anything from, like, another game that you thought was pretty we have like library code from our older games. We don't use a lot of it. I think most of that's like, you know, set parent and position in one helper call and like some sort of transform helpers. Um, but in terms of like the the combat engine, I just didn't like we the the Japanese people don't talk about it a bunch. There's a bunch of people that make like let's play videos, but there's not a lot of info on how did people do the hitbox systems in like Street Fighter versus this other game versus this other game. I, we just kind of winged it. I was just like, all right, well, we need some kind of box to hit a thing, and then I guess we'll play animation. And I guess I'll separate out the character animation from the move data so that, yeah, I just made it up. And I, I, I'm very, we actually, at the last uh, PAX or GDC, we were talking to some other couple. It's like a married couple, and it's referred to Ben and me as a couple, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> we're basically a marriage. But they were making like a beat-em-up game themselves. And we just, like, it wasn't in Unity, but they were familiar with Unity, and they came up with the booth. We just opened up the project. And they're like, okay, yeah, we're doing pretty similar things in this, but this is not quite how we're doing that. So it seems pretty standard to be able to limit things down in like a certain way. Um, but yeah, I just. Like, what was the challenges? Like, so you've been working on it for a while. Like, was there anything unity wise that like really broke your game? Like, a lot of the updates break. Like, we're trying to get the game into five point X, but like the physics is different. So like all of our, it's like all of our like ear pieces and like there's all these dangly bits in the character that move around. Um, they're just like joints. They're all broken. So like, oh yeah, yeah, f physics three to two, uh, but nothing critically ever breaks. And if it does, like we we're actually always on the alpha and like beta lists. Like I've been downloading 5.x builds since alpha one and it's on they have like 15 alphas and they're on beta eight. So I mean I keep an eye on it. And it's nice to be on those lists because it's like, oh shit, we're totally broken here. And then you can just yell at them to fix it. Versus like, oh it's released. And then you're kind of screwed because it's like, oh yeah, you broke my input system. Like I'm screwed. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm also not a programmer programmer. Like if it was me in Visual Studio and like the DirectX sample as a starter, I would never get anywhere. So I would much rather take like, oh, I got to do a weird workaround and like dirty the prefabs, the, the editor tool keeps working. I'd rather do that than like memory management or whatever, right? Like, I, yeah, I don't know. Actually, briefly, the two other questions. So what was your background before? I went to an, like, an art school, actually. Okay. Um, and then I became a programmer slowly, like oh, a self-taught. So you were programming before you were doing yeah, so I, I, I would always do like scripting stuff and then I slowly became a programmer. Our first games were built with Virtuals, which was a visual flowcharting programming language, like no code ever. Um, and then I slowly like coded, coded. And I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I'm coming at it from a very art-centric point of view. Um, and so I guess my other question is less related to that, but you talk a lot, obviously you have a ton of tools that you've made that you've built on top of Unity and uh, like not just the spec stuff, but you also talk about a renaming tool for I guess renaming the prefabs as you go. Like you want to make changes? Uh, the, you build a tool like that that you have not? Well, yeah. That, I mean, like, it's when you rename a public field, all yeah. the data for that will be destroyed. You could, like, there are a couple ways to fix that. Like, one is you could Stop. add the second field so they're both there and then write a script that copies the old and, like, to, to the new. And there's a couple other weird ways to do it. But, yeah, it's a pain and we just don't, we just don't bother. I'm like, oh. But like. It seems like something a lot of people would want. So I guess my point is with the things that you've built, the edit tools you've built and other tools that you've thought about how to make couldn't these be things that you would put into the assets? Yeah, we... Sell? Like, some of these things you could abstract out of the game? Yeah, I mean, we thought about it a little bit, except that it's just, like, just me and Aztez. Like, the more I do that kind of stuff, like, the less, I, like, Aztez is going to ship. Like, even doing this workshop, Aztez is going to ship three, like, three or four days later. But that's cool. Like, I, I don't know. It's, Thanks. I don't know. <laughs> this is, sounds like fun. You're doing the other thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if, like, ten people here buy it, we're all right. Yeah, I mean, uh, we... Could, you're not, you're I, no stranger to community service. Yeah, so. the, the SS store makes a lot of money. I think if you had a tool that would allow you to generically rename fields, yeah. you you would do well with it. 
Yeah, a lot of people would. And it's possible. You can do really dark magic like reflection stuff with Unity. Because the editor is, is C sharp in like a mono type environment. Like you can get to anything and everything. Got a question right here? Can you speak? I don't know, can you speak a little bit louder? We have like the ventilators. Yeah. I mean, I think the best thing with Unity is there's a bunch of sample projects in the asset store, either for free or for like these, you know, pay $10 for the tower defense starter kit. Like, I don't know the code quality of those relative to each other, but like some of them must be good. I would say go spend the 20 bucks on like a starter kit package and just like pick it apart. Um, and then, you know, if it's like a 2D shooter game, like try to add a weapon to it. But I mean, I would honestly say start really small. Like tic-tac-toe with power-ups is like not a joke as a starter project. Like, too many people are like, oh, I'm going to make this RTS, FPS, MMO combo, and they get nowhere with it. Like, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say try to find like even the Angry Bots example project with Unity. I haven't looked at its code, but like, you know, just start with it and just try to figure out like what's happening where and why, and just start from there. Haven't people set up like? I mean, I would imagine that there's a ton of like people who just set up tutorials and stuff. Yeah, they've got the Unity right. Learn page now, which is like I don't know if it's slash Learn. Like, yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of tutorials here. Um, but I don't know if they have a good sense of how to address like yeah. non-programmers. Um, but they do these live Q and A webcasts on Hangout on Google pretty regularly. Like, show up there. I don't think they're super popular. Like, I don't think it's hundreds of people. I think it's like twenty. So if you're to show up, and be like, hey, real time person, I have a question. I think they would just help you. Yeah. Up. That helps. Perfect. Did I exhaust it? No, this is, this is wonderful. We're exactly on time. <laughs> nice. So thanks a lot, first of all. <laughs> and then just as a reminder, I'm, we had like I think eight reservations for the workshop tomorrow. So the workshop tomorrow is right here. Sorry, what? 13. So there are five slots left, four slots left. It's uh, inner workings, one word, dot eventbrite.com. Um, and it's tomorrow right here from 4 to 7 p.m. Like going a lot deeper on all of these things, all of these issues with the hitboxes and the states and the labels and whatnot. Yeah, so, and I, uh, I don't have, I mean, I have like prep for it, but I don't have three hours of prep. So if you want to come and just ask direct questions about your project, like I'd be happy just to let's put some stuff up on that projector and like figure this out myself. Right. Workings.eventbrite.com. Eventbrite. Yep, there you go. Sweet. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for coming. Woo!